In this lecture, you are going to see why user experience matters. I have got you eight important reasons why this user experience matters for both your visitors as well as for the Google bot. The bot can also be termed as the Google Spider, which indexes your website. Internal link structure and page information structure both are important ranking factors in the point of view of a visitor to your site and also in the point of view of Google bot. Pages with images in search engine result pages have increased considerably compared to 2014, whereas pages with video integration in search engine result pages has fallen considerably. This decline is mainly due to the Google's decision on July 2014 not to display video thumbnails in their search engine result pages for smaller content websites and unpopular video portals. So from then, normal Google web results displays videos from popular sites only, such as YouTube, Dailymotion, Vimeo, etc. But inserting images and embedding videos into your content enhances both the user experience and also improves the user signals that are being sent to Google from your website. The number of images and videos are found to be more in posts which are of gallery or tutorial types. Here comes another observation. In 2014, pages with more number of images have ranked better which means these type of galleries and tutorials are ranking better than normal posts. In search metrics research, they have found that the content on higher ranking pages is better structured and they contain more interactive elements. But also, they found those contents to be comprehensive and interpretable for both the users and the Google bot. So simply, higher the ranking, better was the structure of the website. So you should info that if you maintain a better structure, higher will be your ranking. Percentage of Google AdSense or Ad Choices integration in top 30 rankings have fallen considerably compared to 2014. So this doesn't mean that those top websites have opted out of AdSense or Ad Choices. It means that pages which are not displaying any ads has come up compared to pages which display ads. And also, the top positions are mostly dominated by websites which have responsive themes or non-flash content. That means the websites which don't use flash. Above all, these user signals that are sent to Google acts as a direct feedback of the user experience and satisfaction on your website. So this affects the ranking of your website. That is why user experience matters. In this lecture, we are going to see the SEO factor internal links. This is one of the SEO factor belonging to user experience. Let's start with the search metrics keyword research graph. You can see that the overall increase from 2014 to 2015 is around 18 internal links. When you compare the top 10 search results, the average internal links in 2014 was just 131, which is now 150. So the average increase in top 10 search results is 19. When you consider the top 30 search results, average internal links was 115 in 2014, which has become 132 in 2015. Don't assume that these many internal links are in content alone. These are links from header, sidebar and footer too, which are almost in every page of every website. Here is a post from my site. You can see the top posts and pages, recent posts, categories, archives, and related posts, photo menu, the previous and next post, header menu. All these links are counted when you calculate the total 
internal links in a page. So the total links in my post may come around 50 to 60, which is sort of 90 links compared to top 10 search results. So how can you increase these internal links site-wide? You can add top or recent comments, popular posts, etc. But don't set this 150 or 132 as some benchmark or like that. If you want an exact number that you should add in your post or content, then add one highly relevant internal link for every hundredth word. Do this only if it's relevant. Also, if possible, add some teaser in between the content and link to your old articles. For example, you can write like this. If you haven't read my XYZ post, then you can click here to read it. We will see how to add these things in your post under content section. For now, let me show you how Engadget.com adds internal links in their post. This is one of the recent posts published just 11 hours ago. And you can see all these underlines or internal links to other articles in Engadget.com. All these internal links are highly related to this post. Also, they have added some external links too. This is one of the live examples of how to deal with internal links. You need to ensure only one thing. That is, the user browses two plus pages after clicking on the search result. If not two plus pages, make sure that he clicks at least one other page on your site. This should be done to reduce the bounce rate of that search result. because this user signal will be sent to Google about the user's experience on your site. Remember one thing, lower the bounce rate, higher will be your search engine ranking. If you wonder what is bounce rate, then you will learn what is a bounce rate, how to reduce it or how to deal with it in this section but in the upcoming lectures. In this lecture, we are going to see the next SEO factor that is number of images. Compared to the average of 2014, there is an overall increase of around 2 images in 2015. One of the main reasons for increase in file size that we saw in technical factors section is this increase in number of images. But remember how we had overcome those with lazy load images functionalities using Speed Booster plugin and image optimization in page speed section. So all these three things correlate with each other. In the top 10 search results, the increase in file size is due to the increase in number of images, but they are compensated by the increase in page speed too. So there is almost no change in the ranking or there is slight improvement in the ranking for these top 10 search results. Have you understood the cycle? Else, just rewind back the last 15 seconds to make that clear. Let me show you an example. What is a computer? This is a keyword that I have searched for in the Google search engine. And I have opened the top 4 search results. You can see that the first search result consists of a gallery of images for the term what is a computer. And this is how it appeared in the first of Google search result. You can see that gcflearnfree.org and this is gcflearnfree.org. See the content is very thin but because of these gallery of images, this managed to appear first in the search result for the term what is a computer. The second search result consists of only one images but there are lots of internal links to the other post in this site and this is how it managed to appear second in the search result. The third search result has got a combination of some other factors which we are going to see in the upcoming sections and lectures but they have also optimized this article with internal links and outbound links with optimized keywords. Owing to this, the bounce rate for this page should be comparatively lower than the other two pages. Coming to the fourth search result, this post has got both 
internal links as well as images to bring it to number 4 in the search result. From the user point of view, even if the user doesn't have a mood to read the entire post, the first thing he will glance over are the images. So adding relevant images increases the time spent on site, also reduces the bounce rate. So over time, these user signals will give you a ranking boost. Sometimes search results directly link to galleries. For example, when you search for interior design examples, the top three search results gives you nothing but a gallery of images. You can see here, all these three are just a gallery with very 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 thin content and the top second and third search result are sat by the same website that is design your way. I have also made another search for fashion trends 2016. Even in this term the top three search results are just a gallery of images and in this case too the second and third search results are shared by the same website that is Harper Bazaar. Sometimes the users expect these galleries for search terms like this fashion trends or interior design examples like that. So it's nothing wrong in just directing them to gallery, right? Not only this, if you add more images in your post, it will also bring in Google images traffic. But you need to optimize your images to bring Google images traffic to your site. You will learn how to optimize your images to bring in the Google images traffic in the upcoming lectures. In content section, in this lecture, you are going to learn how to add copyright free related images from Google images to your website. So let me tell you an example for the term interior design examples. So these are the results that is the normal web results. Now go to images. Until this step you would have done earlier for finding related images. But what's so special in this lecture? When you click on some pictures that you like, then Google may say you that images may be subject to copyright. There is a serious issue in this picture because I have seen several webmasters who paid fine of more than $8,000 to $10,000 for posting a copyright picture which they are not aware of. So hereby I make you aware of this thing and don't make the same mistake those webmasters have done. So how to take a copyright free related images? For the same term interior design examples, go to search tools and then click on usage rights. Then if you are using this image for non-commercial reuse, then select labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. If you are using for commercial purpose or if you are going to monetize the page in which you are going to post this image, then choose labeled for reuse with modification. If you are not going to modify the image or if you are not going to even watermark it, then you can choose labeled for reuse. Now all these images are copyright free images. You can use them in your website and you will not be fined for using them. But in this lecture, I am going to tell you some other criteria with which you can even narrow down your results. First one is if you want a cartoon or a clipboard, then go to type and then choose clipboard or line drawing. Then all the images that will appear will be a clipboard. But if you want a photo, then click photo as the image type. You will get all the photos and the clipboards or drawings will be removed from this search result. Next, let's go to size. Most of you won't like a smaller images to be posted on your website because almost all the devices that users are using have got high resolution displays, right? So you may wish to choose large in the size to get a larger images such as above 1000 pixels in width and nearing to 1000 pixels in height. So none of these images will appear pixelated when you add them to your site. But if you are very particular about the size, you can go to 
larger than and then choose any size here. For example, if I choose larger than 2 megapixel, then all the images that appear will have the resolution more than 2 megapixels. Not only this, you can also narrow them down by color. That is, if you want a black and white interior design examples, then here it goes. All these images are black and white interior design examples. If you want a particular color, for example, green, then you can choose green and here are the green. If you want to narrow them down using time, that is past 24 hours or past week or custom range, then you can choose a date here. Also, you can opt to show the sizes of these images. When you choose show sizes, then the dimensions of these images will be displayed at the bottom of each of them. At last comes the safe search. For some terms, you may come across some adult or pornographic images and in such case, if you want to filter those search results, then go to safe search and click filter explicit results. This will also block those search results with high violence that are not meant for ages below 13. If at all you want to clear all these customizations or filters, then click clear to get the default interior design examples. This is how you can narrow down the search results and get copyright free related images to be added on your website. In this lecture, we are going to see how video integration acts as an SEO factor in Google search results. Recently, Google modified or optimized their search algorithm and they are no more displaying video snippets in their normal search results for infamous content websites or small video platforms. To put it more clearly, Google displays only the search results of large video platforms such as YouTube, Vimeo or Dailymotion and they are no more displaying the video snippets from small content websites. Here I have searched for auto expo videos in google.com in videos search and you can see that in the top 10 search results only one of the search result is from ndtv.com which is also a video platform but considerably smaller than YouTube, Vimeo or Dailymotion but still it's larger than most other smaller content websites. You can see the link here. NDTV is one of the most popular video platforms in India. So getting a place in Google video searches with your new or moderate traffic content website for a video exclusively is impossible nowadays. Even if you upload your video to some other video platforms such as Vimeo or Dailymotion, the probability of getting ranked or getting higher search engine ranking in Google video search is very low. This is because you can see that out of the top 10 search results, 9 of the search results are from youtube.com alone. So if you upload your video to Vimeo or Dailymotion or Metacalf, some other smaller video platforms compared to YouTube and even if you upload your video to your website, then the probability of appearing in video searches is very very low. Also, your site won't appear on these search engine result pages exclusively for video anymore. That's why we can see a fall from 2014 to 2015 in video integration in this search metrics research. Let's take this fourth spot. In 2014, around 6.5% of the search results have got video integration. But in 2015, it has got reduced to 4.8 percentage. So you should not infer it like video integration has got no SEO value. Actually, it's the reverse. How do I infer that? Because if you add videos to your site like this, this is a sample post from our Udemy SEO website. And here is a random video I have added. If you add a video like this, then you are indirectly increasing the user's time spent on your site which also reduces the bounce rate and people tend to share the content which have got funny videos or viral videos. Thus it increases the overall user experience. 
so i recommend you to add one or two relevant video to your content in your post in this lecture you are going to learn how to add related youtube videos to your content here is the random youtube video i have added to my wordpress post let's see how we can do this this is a plugin which we need to download install and activate in our wordpress to add related video to our wordpress post this plugin has got 100000 plus installs and 150 plus reviews so go to add plugins page and search for youtube the first plugin will be the one that you need to install and activate to speed up the process i have already installed and activated this plugin so let's edit this new post let's have a preview of this post before adding the video this is how this post looks like before adding the video so let's add some video it's always a good idea to add a video after this read more tag so let's add in this spot now click this youtube button to open the youtube visor these three features or from YouTube Pro, that is Pro version of this plugin. To add a related video, click search for a video, a channel playlist or a channel gallery to insert. If you want to directly choose a particular YouTube playlist or a video, then you can directly paste link of that YouTube video and choose this radio button. But if you don't know the URL of that YouTube video, then you can search for it by opting for this radio button and typing the keyword let's search for auto expo videos hit the search button here you have got a list of videos that you can insert into your post you can either click insert into editor button or you can copy this code and paste it in your post wherever you want let's insert this video of course you cannot customize how this embedded video looks like because that belongs to pro version of this plugin so let's just insert this video into editor now click update button once the post has got updated click view post here comes the video one of the important feature of this plugin is that this youtube embedded video will be of responsive type that is if I reduce the width of the browser or if you change from device to device, this YouTube embedded video will be changing its dimensions according to the device or width of the browser. This is what we call as responsive. So let's check how this video plays. So it works, isn't it? This is how you can easily add the related videos to your content. In this lecture, you are going to learn how responsive design acts as a search engine ranking factor in Google search results. As I say regularly, the first search result is mostly an exception case. But here, the second search result also falls into this category because Wikipedia comes mostly in the second search result for the keywords researched and it employs a responsive web design that's why 40 percent of the second search result has got responsive design so what is a responsive web design here is a sample post from wikipedia about advanced micro devices that is amd company and you can see that this website looks normal under normal circumstances but when i start to reduce the width of this browser you can see that the text starts reflow and as i reduce the width completely you can see most of the elements are rearranging themselves but still the font size remains the same have you noticed that this is called responsive web design so when you employ this kind of web design you don't need to employ a separate website for mobile, a separate website for tablets and another design for higher size displays like monitor, TV, etc. So this is called the responsive web design. But 
how you can check whether your website is responsive or not. Here comes the four tools with which you can check whether your website is responsive or not. The first one is mattkersley.com. Here you just need to enter the URL of your website. I have searched for inspireroom.com and it automatically populates the search result under a small phone resolution, iPhone resolution, small tablet resolution and also iPad portrait resolution. You can also scroll down on these websites and you can see how your website looks like in these devices. A similar test website is responsivetest.net. Here you can choose different devices itself. For example, iPhone 4, Samsung Galaxy S4. You can also scroll through how your website looks like. Even you can open several other posts like this. So this is how you can verify how your individual post looks like, how your home page looks like, etc. You can also choose from a range of devices such as Asus tablets, Samsung tablets or Apple MacBook Air or other laptops. You can also choose from desktop computers also. The next tool is Responsive Design Checker. This is the size of iPhone portrait and let's switch to iPhone landscape. Nexus 7 portrait, Nexus 7 landscape, iPad portrait, iPad landscape. You can see how my website adjusts itself ranging from a smaller screen size to a larger screen size. After this 11 inch MacBook Air, my website will start to add white spaces in the left and right of the content to accommodate the increase in display sizes. Let's see 15 inch MacBook Pro, 17 inch workstation, 27 inch monitor. So this is how the responsive web design works. Let's see another or lost responsive design checker tool that is responsinator.com. This is iPhone 5 port, right? And here comes iPhone 5 landscape, iPhone 6 port, right? iPhone 6 landscape and several other devices. You can check your website too. There is one more tool with which you can test the mobile friendliness of your website. Search for Google Mobile Friendly Test and here is the test tool from official Google Webmaster Tools. Just paste your URL and click Analyze. Normally it takes around 20 to 30 seconds to complete this test but when it comes like awesome this page is mobile friendly then you are happy to go isn't it? Also, Google displays how your website looks like in Nexus 6 or Nexus 5 devices. So you can also confirm that if your website fails in this mobile friendly test, then I recommend you to change the theme of your website first to some standard WordPress themes in WordPress repository or buy a premium theme from ThemeForest or Envato, etc. So why is this mobile friendly test significant or how to make your website mobile friendly and all we will see in mobile friendly section. Let's come back to the research results. 30% of the top 30 search results are responsive pages. Also 33% of the top 10 search results are responsive pages. So if a page ranks better than the other one in the search engine result pages then there is high probability that it's responsive or mobile friendly. So you should make sure that your website is readable in all types of devices. From an user experience perspective, if your website doesn't display in a readable form, then bounce rate will be so high for that particular device alone. In this manner also, you can get to know whether your website is responsive across various devices. In this lecture, you will learn how to change to a new responsive theme in your WordPress website. First of all, have a preview of how our website looks in this official 
2016 theme by WordPress. By default, this 2016 theme from WordPress is a responsive theme, but this theme cannot satisfy the needs and looks of everyone. So, at some point of time, you may wish to change to another responsive theme. In this lecture, you will learn how to do that exactly. Go to Appearance and choose Themes. Now click Add New. WordPress will display a list of themes from its repository. Now we need a responsive theme, right? So let's filter this list with the themes which are responsive only. Go to this feature filter and then select Responsive Layout. Then click Apply Filters. All the themes that are appearing now are responsive in nature. I have chosen this scripted theme and installed it already. But to make you understand, let me install another theme. Let's try this Olsen Light theme. Before installing, you can click this details and preview to have a full screen preview of this theme. This is how this responsive theme will look like. I am going to resize the browser window now and let's see how this responsive theme reacts to the resize of the browser. This theme is extremely responsive, isn't it? I think there is no display less than this width. So this website will be visible and legible in almost all the devices. That's why this is responsive, right? So if you like this theme, and let's assume that you like this theme, then you can go ahead and click the install button. Now before configuring, you can have a live preview of the theme. This is how the website will look after activating it. But you could observe that Google Fonts hasn't got loaded. This is because of the optimization settings. I will tell you how to deal with this. That is why I am walking you through the theme installation process. First, click Save and Activate. Everything is well and good except for the Google Fonts. This is how the single post page looks. So let's deal with this Google font issue. Go to settings and then auto optimize. Then uncheck remove Google fonts. Now click save changes and empty cache. Now let's refresh this page. Well, you can see the difference, isn't it? Google fonts has got loaded. But in the page speed section, I have enabled this remove Google fonts. For that, we have done a workaround. So let's see what you can do to check remove Google fonts. Right click on the theme or on home page or on any post and then select view page source or you can simply press Ctrl U on your keyboard. Once you have opened this view source code, search for fonts.google and then select this entire URL then view this URL by right click and go to this URL or you can copy this and paste it in a new tab. I have opened this URL here and there is another font that this theme uses. So open that also. Now you have got two CSS codes. Select the first one, then copy and then go to tools above the fold, then replace this inline CSS with the one you have copied now. Then come to the second font, copy it and then paste it here. Now click save, then go to settings, auto optimize and then check remove Google fonts. Then click save changes and empty cache. Let's refresh this page. Now we have checked this remove Google fonts checkbox in auto optimize and also the Google fonts are getting loaded. So your page speed score will be back and also your new responsive theme is up. 
In this lecture, you are going to learn how the font size acts as a ranking factor in Google search results. This factor has not been analyzed until 2015 by search metrics. You should notice that there is something unique here because all the top ranking sites follow a same pattern of font size. Here is the mean font size for above the fold region. If you wonder what is above the fold region, then let me explain it quickly. Here you can see my website inspireroom.com and by default without scrolling down, you can see the header, the menu bar, the title and a few lines of content along with a few lines of sidebar. So this is called above the fold content. So where is the fold? A fold is an imaginary line which lies exactly in the spot or in the bottom region before scrolling the screen. So in my website, here is that imaginary fold. So now you could have understood what is above the fold. So let's come to search metrics research. In the above fold region, the mean font size is 14 points or 14 pixels. This includes the header, the navigation bar and headings. Also, you can see that the central or body area of the website's mean font size is 12 points or 12 pixels. This central area includes the sidebar and also the body or content of the website. So what is the key takeaway from user experience point of view? It's to ensure easy readability for your users. You should make sure to cross check the browser compatibility for font family, size, etc. For example, you might have installed Google Fonts in your website to make your website font look good, isn't it? In such case, these fonts may get loaded in Chrome on Firefox and these may fail to load in Internet Explorer or Edge or some previous versions or older versions of browsers. So it's the responsibility of the webmaster or the web admin, that is you, to check the cross compatibility of browsers. So how can you do that? There are some predefined tools which I will share with you now. The first one is Net Renderer. You just need to enter the URL of your website and choose the browser from the left drop down list but this tool will check only across the Internet Explorer versions from 5.5 to 11. So when you click render, it will start to render your website across these browsers and it will start to produce the results or screenshots. You can see that the image is not getting displayed, right? This is because I am using lazy load plugin to load images only when the user starts to scroll his scroll button. So this is almost okay. Now let's use the next tool that is browser link. This is a slightly advanced tool because you can also choose the operating system version, the browser, etc. So let's test my website and click test now. The main advantage of this browser link is you can emulate any browser such as Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari across many operating systems. But this is a kind of time consuming thing because you need to emulate each browser one by one to test the browser compatibility. So let's move on to our third tool that is browsersorts.org. This tool will send a list of visitors from Linux, Windows and Mac across a series of browsers. So this will produce a series of screenshots opened through these browsers across these operating systems. So it's a bit time saving option compared to all other tools. Let's click submit and wait for the results. But the only drawback is that this is a bit time consuming in terms of loading your website across all these browsers under all these operating systems. So you can just bookmark this link and you can visit later but within 60 minutes because after which you need to run this test again to test the cross browser compatibility. After some time, you need to refresh this page to see whether any screenshots have got populated. 
So far, three screenshots have got loaded. That is from Chrome under Debian OS, Aurora under Debian OS, Epiphany under Debian OS. And in the end of this lecture, I will show you all these screenshots across 145 browsers. Like we checked the responsive design using the responsive design checker tools in the previous lecture, you can use these tools to check the cross compatibility of your website across various browsers. The simple logic is smaller the display, the larger the font should be. Here comes the screenshot of my website inspireron.com across all the 145 browsers that I had selected while testing. In this lecture, you are going to learn how interactive elements acts as a ranking factor in Google search results. This interactive elements is something that works on user interaction such as menus, links on header, floating social share buttons, etc. But how this interactive elements increases the user experience? It's very simple. They make it easy to navigate. For example, if someone comes to my website, the first thing that they will see is my homepage and the posts on the homepage and immediately they will come to the top posts and pages or the recent posts. So I make it easy for the returning visitors to directly go into the recent posts. You can also add categories, pages, archives and every information they need into the sidebar or header or in the menu. Simply structure your website and make it easily accessible anywhere on your site. So better the structure, higher will be your ranking. Two things you should remember in the header section. Let's analyze this Engadget website. You should structure your menu in a logical way. That is, don't dump every categories or pages in the header menu. You could see that Engadget has got a lot of categories and pages in their website. But in the menu, they have added a selective number of categories and pages only. Because most of the people visiting Engadget looks for gaming gadgets and the recent smartphones, reviews, etc. So, the first thing that they add in the menu is gear or gadget, gaming news and gaming devices and several other things. Not only this, you should make sure that these menus are non-obtrusive on smaller screen devices because they affect the user experience too. For example, most of the websites employ this kind of sticky header which travels along with you when you scroll down the website. This is good in larger screens such as TV or monitor or even in laptops. But when you visit these websites in tablets or smartphones, this kind of sticky header will take up almost one fourth of the device screen size itself. So this becomes obtrusive for the users. So that affects your users user experience on your website. Let's see how you can add interactive elements in footer, under the content and in sidebar. Let's come to this WCCF Tech website. You can see this popular post widget in this sidebar. But unlike the title, all these posts are sorted in the criteria that is number of comments. So higher the comments, the popular will be the post. This induces the user to think what's so special about this post that it has got 2500 plus comments. Not only that, users are very lazy to enter their name, email, etc. to comment. But enabling anonymous comments can become spammy. So I advise you to add discuss comments or Facebook comments or Jetpack comments to your WordPress website. In the next lecture, let's see how to add these things. But in this lecture, I will demonstrate you how this discuss comment is easier to comment. When I click my cursor into join the discussion, you are provided with login with discuss or Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or you can immediately sign up in discuss.com. Makes it easier for the user to log in with any of these social network platforms. 
so they don't need to sign up or enter their name or email to comment in this website. Why should you make the user to comment in your website? It's very simple. It increases their time spent on your website and it also reduces the bounce rate. If you can't make your users to comment on your website and if they are too lazy to even do that, then you can add polls at the end of the content. There is a plugin called WP Polls under WordPress repository which you can use to add polls into your website's content. The specialty about polls is users can vote in just one or two clicks and also view the results. So they don't need to log in or they don't need to enter their name or email or even the content of the comment. So this is how you can add interactive elements in the footer or in the below content region. As I said previously, in the sidebar, you can add recent comments or popular posts in the order of number of comments. This will invite the new users to interact with the previous comments in your post. In this lecture, you will learn how to install Facebook comments, discuss comments, add recent comments widgets, and some other interactive elements, how to add those into your website. First, let's start with Facebook comments. Go to Add Plugins page and search for Facebook comments. You need to install this Facebook comments by Vivacity, which has got 10,000 plus active installs and 19 reviews. Go ahead and click the Install Now button and then click activate once installed. You can access the settings for this plugin by going to settings and then FB comments. Once you have activated and once you are inside the settings of this plugin, you need to add the app ID of your Facebook app. If you haven't created an app yet, then click create an app. It will open this page and then click create new app. Type your website name here and then choose a category. Then click create app ID just for some verification purpose like capture you will be asked to choose some images and this may vary based on the cookies that are set for you. I have got the app ID. I need to copy this and paste it here. Now go ahead and click save changes. Before that, select hide WordPress default comment system from website and then click save changes. The settings are saved. Now let's preview our website. To see the comments, we need to view any of these posts that is single post. Here comes our Facebook comment system. Anyone who has already logged in into their Facebook account can log in, can comment on your website without creating an account on your website or without entering their name and email address. So this is the benefit of adding Facebook comment system into your website. Now let's move ahead and install discuss comment system into our website. Search for discuss in add plugins page but remember the spelling for discuss is D-I-S-Q-U-S and then install the first plugin that you get here that is discuss common system. Click install now button. Once the plugin has got installed, click activate plugin. Now go to comments and select discuss. Once you install this plugin, discuss comments will ask you to upgrade your database to install discuss comments into your website. So it's better to take a backup of your database before upgrading it. Since this is a dummy website, I'm gonna go ahead and click upgrade without taking the backup. Once you have upgraded the database, you need to enter the username and password of your discuss comment system or your discuss profile. If you haven't created a discuss profile, you can follow this link and sign up for a discuss profile. Once you have logged in, you will be asked to select a website if you have already created a website in your Discuss profile. If you haven't created a website, then 
click register a new one on discuss website here enter your blog name and then choose your unique discuss url it can be anything and it doesn't need to be your site name and then choose a category then click next now you need to go to comments and then discuss now you will see the newly created website and you can choose it and then click next click continue to moderation dashboard and then click go to discuss moderation this will open a separate page on discuss.com so you cannot moderate your discuss comments on your website but you will be taken to discuss.com it's actually pretty neat and organized to manage comments but let's see how the comment system looks like on our website let's open a post i am viewing one of my post in this test dummy website and you can see that the discuss comment system is not appearing if this is a case then there is an issue with your theme and it's incompatible with one of the features of discuss comment system in such case go to plugins that is installed plugins page and then click settings on discuss comment system you will be taken to this page and come down and untick external javascript files this will render the discuss scripts as internal files unlike external files which we opted for earlier so click save now refresh this post and you will see the discuss comments now see it's appearing let's make a test comment our test comment has got appeared so this is how you can add discuss comments in your website now let's see how to add recent comments widget on your sidebar go to appearance and select widgets then drag this recent comments widget into your sidebar i have already added one so just give it some title like popular posts or recent comments etc and then click save once you have done that you will see these recent comments widget appearing on your sidebar since users are commenting on this post and lot of interactions are happening normally visitors will be attracted on these posts so this will increase the time on site for visitors or they will click one plus pages when they come via some search results this is how you can increase the time on site and also reduce the bounce rate now let's see how you can add polls to your wordpress website go to add plugins page and search for wp polls and then install the first plugin which has got 100000 plus installs and 83 reviews once you have installed and activated this plugin you can access this plugin via the side panel that is polls and then click add poll you can create any question and you can provide multiple choice answers so that users can choose one or vote on one of the answer if you wish to allow user to select multiple answers then you can opt for that too you can also choose a start and end date for these polls i have created a test poll that is do you like this website so how i can add this into my content or sidebar normally go to appearance and then widget and drag this polls widget into your sidebar and then select any of the poll that you have created then click save this is how you can display the polls in sidebar if you want to display a poll into any of your post then go to edit post and move your cursor to a place where you need to insert the poll and then choose this button that is insert poll button and then enter the poll id normally when you create a poll it will display you the id of that poll that you have created recently for example you may choose poll id 1 or 2 if you forget the id of your poll then you can get it via 
manage polls. Here you can see the ID of different polls that you have added. Now come to the edit post and click insert poll and enter the poll ID. Then update your post. Let's see how our website looks like along with the poll. Do you like this website? Yes. What here? Once a user has voted, they can see the results. The same poll is available in the sidebar too. You can even change the background color of the button on mouse hover or mouse away, etc. So, in this lecture, you learned how to add Facebook comments, how to add discuss comments, how to add recent comments widget, and also how to add polls into your content as well as the sidebar. In this lecture, you are going to learn how the presence of unordered list affects your search engine ranking in Google search results. What is unordered list? Unordered list are nothing but just bullet points. You can see from this graph that the average of presence of unordered list in second search result alone amounts to 50%. This is mainly because of the presence of Wikipedia in the second search result among the keywords researched by search metrics. But in the top 10 search results, the average of presence of unordered list amounts to 47%. The same is 44% in top 30 search results. Don't infer that if you have unordered list, you will move up in the ranking. That's a wrong inference. Then how should you infer this? This is just the inverse. If you make the user experience for your user a good experience, then the bounce rate will be lower and you will move up in the search engine ranking. So from the user point of view, how unordered list improves the user experience? Let's take this e-commerce website for an example. If a user looks for the specification of some smartphones like this, then instead of searching for that specification in this paragraph if you have made those specifications in unordered list like this then it will be easier for the user to glance over and find the needed information see the famous gsm arena website they used to make all the specifications in the form of table so if i want to know the ram of samsung galaxy s6 then I straight away go to the memory section and I will read this internal RAM section. Here I get 3 GB RAM. So it's so easy to interpret, right? This is how you should make the information to be easily readable for your users. This is a blog or website your favorite instructor Saromino Arthi maintains. She used to post all the important information and specifications of the products in the form of unordered list. She does this all the time in each and every post she publishes. See, in this post, AMD Radon Fury X2, she mentions all the important features in unordered list. So it's pretty easy to interpret and read the information, right? So from the user experience point of view, it's easier to glance as well as read. Also make the important values or important points in bold even in the unordered list, it will be much easier for the user to glance over these bullet points. In almost all the posts, she adds these unordered lists. You can see here. You can see here too. Also, you can see there is a 0 0.07 correlation. So what is this? It's nothing but if you structure the content in a better manner, higher will be your ranking. Let me show you a short demo of how to convert the relevant paragraph into an unordered list. This is just a procedure, so don't convert all of your unnecessary paragraphs into unordered list. Assume that these are some specification of a product, then press enter on each sentences. And then select these sentences, then Click this bulleted list button. This will create the unordered list. Once you update the post, you can preview this post and also these bullet points or unordered list. 
here comes the unordered list that we have created just now. So what is this research says? The top first and second search results have got an average of 17 unordered lists in each of their posts. In the top 10, the same is 13 and in the top 30 search results, each of the posts has got at least 10 unordered lists. So don't infer in the reverse manner that is if you increase the number of bullet points or number of unordered lists you will get higher ranking yes it may be true to some extent but that's not the entire fact you should make the content easily readable for the user in terms of bullet points but you should create the unordered list or bullet points for those content which should be made as bullet points don't convert all the paragraph into unordered list to manipulate the ranking. So be genuine and relevant. In this lecture, you are going to learn how ad links or AdSense ads affect your search engine ranking in Google search results. Percentage of websites with AdSense integration is getting reduced. The same trend was seen in 2014 too. The first and second search result represents that particular brand or Wikipedia. If you consider from the third average search result, 10 to 14 percent of websites that appear in top 30 search results have got third party ads like AdSense or AdLinks. But the overall average is just 11 percentage. But most of the webmasters or bloggers like you depend upon ad income, right? In that case, move your ads below the fold to rank better. So what is below the fold? When you open a website, above the fold is a region which you can view without scrolling the website. And below the fold is a region which you can see only upon scrolling. But AdSense recommends to put ads above the fold, right? And also, if you do the technique that I saw, that is below the fold, you will lose some revenue, isn't it? But you need to decide the priority yourself. My recommendation is put the ads below the fold till you improve your brand authority to a reasonable level. Once you have improved your brand authority or domain SEO visibility, you can add one ad in the header and one ad in the sidebar and even this you can add below the fold and if you want to add another ad or another advertisement you can add that advertisement inside the content or in the region where you will display the related posts or articles and also there are certain practices that you should avoid to protect your search engine ranking what are all the practices don't add too much of ads in the above fold region it's better to have one or two ads as the maximum limit try to avoid these kind of interstitial ads which cannot be closed for a certain number of seconds and also avoid pop-up ads or overlay ads like this in content overlay ads are best suited only for videos or video players don't use them alongside the content because that will impact or spoil the user's user experience. Don't force the user to click or view your ad to access the content because if you are using AdSense in this manner or ad choices in this manner, then you will get banned because that's against the policy of Google's ad choice. If you are using some other ad networks, then that kind of activity will spoil the user experience which will indirectly reduce your search engine ranking. So make sure that your content is visible alongside these kind of ads. In this lecture, you are going to learn three different kinds of user signals and how Google knows about these user signals that are generated in your website and also what Google can do with these user signals. The three user signals are as follows. The first one is CTR or click-through rate. The second one is time on site. That is the amount of time spent on your site by each visitor from Google search. The third one is bounce rate, 
which we will see in the upcoming lectures. So, how Google knows about these user signals that are generated in your website? Google has got three weapons to determine these user signals in your website. The first weapon is the Google Analytics code which you use on your site to analyze the visitors on your website, which Google themselves can use those code and reports to get the user signals on your website. Not only that, if you use Google AdSense or Ad Choices code, then also Google can deduct those user signals for the judgment. Above all, 50% of internet users uses Chrome browser, which is a lot of data to analyze each and every website. Besides these, Google can easily track the visitor's behavior if they click back to the search result or if they search again quickly the same or related keywords too. With these three signals, Google can judge the user experience of visitors that Google sends from its search result to your website. By reading or analyzing these three factors, Google can determine the user experience of your organic search visitors. Hence, Google will increase or decrease your search engine ranking accordingly. In this lecture, we are going to see the most important topic of this section that is click-through rate or CTR. What is CTR or click-through rate? It is just the percentage of users who click the results compared to total number of users who have viewed the search results. For example, here is my search analytics for my website inspireround.com. Here you are seeing the post 7 days of my search analytics results. You can see that for AMD Polaris keyword, my website has got appeared 144 times in Google search results and the average position is 12.2. So I have got 24 clicks out of 144 impressions which amounts to 16.67 CTR. This is like a chain or cycle. If your click-through rate or CTR improves, then there is a higher probability for your website to appear higher in the search results. So higher the CTR, higher will be your ranking. If your ranking is higher, then your CTR will be higher. So it's a chain process. I should justify that statement, right? Let's come to this research. In this graph, it's actually a bit different instead of what I have said earlier. That is, it concentrates on the position. If you rank first, then the average CTR is 32%. If you rank second in the Google search result, then your CTR will be 14%. If you rank third, then your CTR will be 10% only. And it goes on like this. So if you get the top position, then your CTR will be higher. Let's assume that your website has moved from fifth position to third position. From average of 6% CTR, you will move to 10% CTR. If your website or the search result performs above this average of 10%, then your ranking will improve and you will move up to second or the first position. This is a justification for the statement I said in the beginning of this lecture. Also, you can see the correlation factor is 0.67, which is the highest of any search engine ranking factor that we have seen till now in this course. So what is this 0.67 correlation mean? In this top 10 search results, you can see that the CTR of second search result is 14% which is lesser than the first. Also the CTR of third search result is lesser than the second and it goes on like this, right? But the CTR of 10th search result is almost equal or slightly higher than the 9th search result. So this seems to be an exemption, right? Likewise, only one-third of the results show exceptions to this rule, which can also be said as 67% positive or 0.67 correlation in other words. But if you are in lower positions, 
such as 9 or 10 or 11 or 20. Then by optimizing your headings, your meta description and using rich snippets, you can get higher click-through rate or CTR. By course of time, your ranking will also improve. Among the search results analyzed by the search metrics, one third of the search results use rich snippets. So what is rich snippets? How to add it to your website? We will see these things in the upcoming lectures. But when we take the World Wide Web, only 0.3% uses rich snippets. This may seem somewhat insignificant for you. But do you know another fact? 0.3% of this total World Wide Web occupies one third of the top 30 search results due to this rich snippets. So if you consider the top 30 search results, 9 to 10 search results use rich snippets. So if I continue beyond this point without showing you what is a rich snippet, then it will be harder for you to visualize, isn't it? So let's move on to rich snippets. Normally, when you search on Google search engine, you will see results in this form. That is the title, the URL and a few lines of meta description. But this search result is an exemption, right? In addition to this one line of meta description, it also displays some other text in some format of hidden table. You can see this result also where it displays a rating, number of reviews, price, availability of the stock, etc. So when you search for Bose Quiet Comfort and if you are in a mode to buy this product, then obviously you will be clicking any of these search results compared to this PDF. So even if this PDF is in a higher ranking compared to this lower search result, over a course of time, this third or lower search result will move up in the search positions because of higher CTR. There are seven types of rich snippets that can be added to your website. The seven rich snippets are product, recipe, review, event, software application, video, and then news article. The most common rich snippets that are used by websites are related to video, that is movies and TV series. You can see the famous IMDb website which uses the movie rating as a rich snippet. The second most used rich snippet belongs to the product or online e-commerce sites. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to add the best heading and meta description for your post in your site to get the maximum click-through rate or CTR. So how should be your headings? Your headings should be in a particular manner that it attracts social stats, more traffic and also search engine ranking. To have all these features, your headline should have three important characteristics. The first one is the type of heading. It should either be a list, for example, top 10 items in particular category or five easy steps to do something. Like this, it should be a list or it can be a how-to tutorial, for example, how to write a post, how to draw easily. Like this, it can have this how-to word in the beginning or in the middle or you can frame the heading in the form of a question which should Tease the users to click it to know the answers. So your headline should be either of these three types. It should either be a list or it should have the word how to or it should be a question. The second element is your heading should have the right balance of common, uncommon, emotional and power words. The third most important element is number of words and the character limit. This is mainly for the search engine optimization because most of the search engines display your heading up to some 55 or 60 characters in their search results. Also, if you limit your heading to 5 to 7 words, then it will be easier for the user 
to glance over the headings quickly. So in this lecture, I am going to tell you three different tools to analyze your headings and get a score. It's quite interesting, right? Let me test my heading in all these three tools. The first tool that we are going to see is Headline Analyzer from Course Schedule. Let me paste my headline here. How to write five awesome headings quickly. So let's analyze this. Well, this headline has got the score of 76. So let's see what are the things this headline lacks. This has no common words, no uncommon words, but has a 43% emotional words and 14% power words. The one power word which is present in our headline is awesome. And there are two emotional words. They are how to and quickly. In the resources section of this lecture, I will be attaching these links so that you can download the emotional words and power words so that you can insert them into your headlines. This headline is of a list type because we said how to write five awesome headings. This five mentions a list. Our character count is well below the 55 and the word count is seven which is approximately around 6, so that is also termed as a good factor. This is how our heading will appear in search results and in email. Normally, people tend to read the first three words and the last three words when they glance over the title. So, you should accommodate the most important words in these sections. So, let's try the same headline in our next tool. This tool is from subjectline.com. Let me paste my headline and I'm gonna hit evaluate. Well, subject line gives me 100 out of 100 and also it gives me extra 4 points since it contains a number 5. How to write 5 awesome headings? This 5. So, subject lines gives an advice. Great job! Your subject line meets industry standards. So, getting a score of 100 in subject line is not so tough. But in course schedule is a bit tough, but in advanced marketing institutes headline tool, getting a score above even 50 is a very tedious task. Just paste your heading here and then choose a category, then click submit for analysis. Well, this heading has got the EMV score of 42.86. Most professional copywriters will get 30 to 40 percent EMV score, whereas only the most gifted copywriters can get a score above 50 percentage. But getting an 100 percentage score is almost impossible in this tool. If you want to try, then I appreciate it. Now I am going to demonstrate you how you can insert a different heading for your post and a different heading for search engine. For the same post. Here is one of the posts in my website inspireround.com and you can see that the heading of this post has almost exceeded the 55 character limit. But I don't wish to reduce any of these words in the title of my post. But I should reduce the word for search engines alone. So what can I do? Select the title, copy it, then come down and then paste in our Yoast SEO snippet editor. Here you can delete the word which you don't want. For example, I want to delete this word exposed. So the title which I give for search engines will be well under 55 characters limit, but the title in my post will appear in full. So this is how you can maintain two titles one in your post and one for search engines. Coming to meta descriptions. Normally, if you don't give a meta description in this Yoast SEO editor, then it automatically generates the first 150 to 155 characters of your post, which may not be optimized for the keyword 
and also it may not act as a teaser or it may not encourage the user to click your link. So what can you do? As I said in the previous sections, I encouraged you to write headings in your post, right? Copy all the H1 headings from your post and then paste in the meta description. If you don't have H1 headings or if your H1 headings doesn't come up to 150 characters, then start copying the H2 headings. So what is the benefit here? As I said in the previous lecture, you could have written the keyword in those headings. So obviously you are getting the keywords in meta description too. And also by copying the headings in meta description, you are giving the user an overview of what is present in your post. So you are getting two benefit out of one. So don't leave this field empty or don't make it to auto generate your meta descriptions. Spend some extra 20 seconds to optimize this meta description and title which will fetch you at least two to three times the organic traffic. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to add rich snippets in your posts. In click through rate lecture itself, we have seen the importance of rich snippets. But adding a rich snippet plugin into your WordPress website is very easy and it also much easier to add rich snippets for every post in your site. But it will be a little bit time consuming and also you may feel bored to add rich snippets to bulk of your previous posts that you have already published. But just make it a practice to add rich snippets whenever you make a new post. So let's add the required plugin first. Go to add plugins page in your WordPress website and search for rich snippets. The second plugin that is all-in-one schema.org rich snippets is the plugin that you need to install. The description of the plugin itself says that boost CTR. So it justifies my statement, right? Go ahead and install it and then activate it. You no need to configure or play around with the settings of this plugin. Just install this plugin. After that, edit any of your post, then come down. You will see this configure rich snippet box where you need to select what kind of post is this. For example, let's assume that this is an item review. Then you need to enter the reviewer's name and also write the review in this box. Then give a rating here. Once you update this post, then the rich snippets for item review will be added to this post. If this post is an event, then you will have to fill in multiple fields. Let's assume that you are organizing a bloggers meet. Then give the event title as the blogger meet. Enter the location, street address, region, postal code, etc. And then give the start and end date. If you are providing a ticket, then mention the price and also the currency. If you are selling the ticket in separate page, then enter the URL of that page here. This is how you can add the rich snippets for events. Let's fast forward this lecture. I am going to demonstrate the product next. Let's assume that this post is mentioning about a product. For example, Apple iPhone 6s. Then enter the brand as Apple. Enter the product name as iPhone 6s. Then upload the image or if you have already uploaded one, then paste the URL of that image here. Then enter the price, currency and then availability. But by default, if you are selling a product, you won't be using this rich snippet plugin. You would have installed WooCommerce plugin, which by default adds these rich snippets into your product page. But what if you are just adding this product as a catalog and you are not selling it? In such case, you can use this rich snippets product, right? So let's move to video. Assume that you have added a video in this post and also you have written an article about that video in this post. In such case, give the title of that video here, add some description and then add the video thumbnail image in this box or you can upload one. For example, if you have 
uploaded a YouTube video and if you are writing a post about that then you can use that same YouTube video thumbnail here. If you want to upload that video then upload the video file here but if you want to embed the YouTube video paste the URL of that YouTube video. But don't do both of these that is don't upload a file and also provide embed video link. Just do any one of these. Then provide video duration and upload date here and then hit update button to update this post. There are multiple other rich snippets available with this plugin and you can use any of them depending upon your post. But what if if your website is not WordPress based? In such case you can use microdatagenerator.com and then go to local business generators or think generators where you can generate the rich snippet code by choosing any of these categories. For example, if you are generating the rich snippet code for video object, then click video object, enter the video title, duration, thumbnail, the content URL or the embed URL, enter any one of these URL, don't give both of them, then mention the upload date and video description. Once you hit submit button, you will get a rich snippet code which you can directly copy paste into your HTML website. In this lecture, you are going to learn the SEO factor time on site. What is time on site? Let me explain you through this image. Let's assume that a visitor enters at 10 am into the home page of your website. Then at 10.1 he is going to page 4 and at 10.2 he is coming back to page 2. Then at 10.5 am he is moving to page 3 and then at 10.7 am he is moving to page 5. Let's assume that he is exiting your website at 10.10 10 am. Then the time span that he spent on your website from the home page till page 5 will be assumed as the time spent on your site. This is another example. Let's assume that a visitor is visiting your page 1 at 0 time and then he is moving from page 1 to page 2 at 10 seconds. Then he is exiting the page 2 at 1 minute 25 seconds and then moving to page 3 at the same time. Then he is making an event that is he may interact with any of the interactive elements that is present on your website such as he may share your post on any social networks or he may enter a comment or he may vote on any polls or stuffs like that. But we couldn't track when he closed your page or your website or his browser itself. In that case the time span of 0 second to the time when the event occurred on the page 3 that is 2 minutes 38 seconds will be taken as the time spent on your site in total whereas the time spent on page 3 will be calculated as 2 minutes 38 seconds minus 1 minute 25 seconds which comes to 1 minute 13 seconds. So this is how we derive the time spent on a page and also the time spent on site. In this example, we said that the exiting time was unknown. But sometimes the exit time will be computed by Google. For example, when the user click the back button to the Google search page from any of your pages on your website or if he closes your website tab or your website window or if he closes the browser altogether then that time will be taken as the exit time. Now let's come to the research. Here the average time on site for top 3 search results is 121 seconds. So this 121 seconds doesn't mean time spent on a page. This 121 seconds is time spent on entire site. So it could be divided between multiple number of pages and the time on site for the top 10 search results is of 100 seconds in average which is a significant difference 
of around 20 to 21 seconds. Here you can also see there is a correlation of 0.09 or we can also say it as 9 percentage which denotes that the difference between first search result to another search result's time on site is 9% significant. You should remember one thing, a user searching for an election result or exam result or even a sports result will spend lesser time on search results or on websites compared to those who search for booking a movie, a holiday, a hotel or who is purchasing a product or researching a topic. So this is how time spent on site varies from category of websites to another category. In this lecture, you are going to see what is bounce rate and how it acts as a search engine ranking factor. According to Wikipedia, the bounce rate is the percentage of visitors to a particular website who navigate away from the site after viewing only one page. It's so obvious that a rising bounce rate is a sign that your home page or the page which the visitor is visiting from the Google search result is boring, right? Let's see this infographic. According to this infographic by Kissmetrics, bounce rate is the percentage of single page visits that is the visits in which the person left your site from the entrance page it is also a measure of visit quality so a higher bounce rate generally indicates the landing pages aren't relevant to your visitors you should know this fact that google takes the bounce rate as an important seo ranking factor you can easily calculate the bounce rate of any page using this equation. Here, TV represents total number of visits viewing one page only, whereas TE represents total entries to the page. So the ratio of TV to TE represents bounce rate. But you don't need to calculate this for every page. Just install Google Analytics and you can view the bounce rate of every landing page or the entrance pages. So what are all the visits which are counted as bounced? Let's assume that a visitor is visiting your website from a Google search result. If he clicks on a link to a page on a different website, then he is considered as bounced back. Even if he clicks the back button to leave the site to Google search page again, then also he is considered as bounced back. If he closes the window or tab of your website or even the browser altogether or if he types a new URL from the page of your site or if the session times out, then in these situations, the visitor is considered as bounced back. So again, by using this equation, Google computes the bounce rate for each and every page of your website. But bounce rate varies from industry to industry. That is, it's not the same across all categories of websites. According to this infographic, the average time on site is 190 seconds. I think you remember what is a time on site because we just saw in the last lecture. And the average page views is 4.6. There comes the average bounce rate, that is 40%. But for retail sites, which drive well-targeted traffic, the bounce rate is just 20 to 40 percentage. For single landing pages or the sales pitch pages, most of the users bounce back and that's why it has got an average of 70 to 90 percentage bounce rate. For portals such as Amazon, Yahoo groups, Facebook groups, etc., the bounce rate average is 10 to 30 percentage because there the interaction is very high which leads to lower bounce rate. Let's come to the important category that is content websites. Blogs, news websites, magazine websites, all of these websites fall under the category content websites. These websites usually get high search engine visibility often for irrelevant terms. So their bounce rate often stays between 40 to 60 percentage. If you target more relevant terms in search engine 
and if you can reduce your bounce rate below 40 percent then there is a sure shot to get top three rankings in google search page let's come to the research of search metrics the bounce rate indicates to google how happy are your users after reading your content so higher the happiness of users or higher the satisfaction of users lower will be the bounce rate even if an user reads an entire post and returns back to google search to research the topic on other sources that is also considered as bounced back so you should find all the pages that are having higher bounce rate by using some analytics tools such as google analytics and all those higher bounce rate pages should be removed or reworked entirely in this graph you can see that the top three search results have an average bounce rate of just 35 percentage which is not so easy to attain the overall average of top 10 search results is 37 percentage and the difference is very meager that is just two percentage and that's why the correlation is very low that is four percentage or 0 0.04 in this lecture you are going to learn how to reduce the bounce rate and how to increase the time spent on your site by the visitors coming from google search engine or of course any search engine that is simply the organic traffic in this lecture you are going to learn a series of things which will prevent your user from moving out of your site once they come inside that is all about bounce rate right so let's start with the featured images the first recommendation that i am giving you is to create eye catchy thumbnails as featured images for the posts in your website to create eye catching thumbnails use canva.com you can create an account or connect with your social networking accounts and then you can start designing featured images or thumbnails for the post that you create in your website there are several presets available in canva.com like the one i am drawing here and you can create these eye catchy thumbnails in just two to three minutes these kind of high quality and polished thumbnails will induce the user to make a click and see what is there inside the post so let's move on to the next recommendation we have already seen in the video integration lecture the youtube embed plugin by using this plugin add related videos to your website so that when the user is viewing the video he will spend more time on your website automatically so i recommend you to add related videos for every possible post the next recommendation is to avoid pop-up or interstitial ads when a user enters into your website and if you push these pop-up or interstitial ads into the face of the visitor then there is no surprise that you will get 80 to 90 percent bounce rate so just avoid using this the next is subscription box most of the bloggers used to push this subscription box into the face of the visitor when they enter into the blog from the search engines before even knowing what is the content that is available in your website how can a new visitor will subscribe to your website so use the recent developments in subscription box plugins and display to the users when they exit out of your website offer them something free which instead of increasing your bounce rate will reduce the bounce rate and keep the user within your website here is one of the nice example when the user moves his cursor to the exit button of the tab or the browser this pop-up will appear and it will say or offer something free by saying before you go or before you exit out of this website this is a nice and catchy pop-up subscription box the next thing is page speed according to a latest research 80 percent of the users in europe abandon a website if it doesn't load within two seconds so make sure that your website has a top page loading time if you haven't optimized your website for the best page speed score or the lowest page loading time then look back into the page speed section where you can attain as low as 0.4 second page load time and 96 page speed score coming to the next recommendation related posts sometimes 
you may have to write a short post of 250 to 300 words and once the visitor has completed reading the article he may go back to the search result to research more on the topic instead of allowing the visitor to go back you may display some related posts on that topic so that you can keep the visitor within your website to insert this related post into your content you need to install uso related post plugin go to add plugins page and search for uso related posts you will get this plugin and you can configure the related posts in all of these styles possible first of all you can give the heading as related post or some other inducing headline to induce a user to click on these related posts you can choose the number of related posts to display you can even add a default featured image for the post which don't have any image then i recommend you to switch on this target link what this makes is whenever a user click on the related post it will open in a new tab so even if the user closes that next tab your first tab will be in open condition which will increase the time on site so automatically your bounce rate will reduce then come to styling and you can choose any of these styles choose the thumbnail size as medium instead of thumbnail because it will display a prominent size of the featured image you can also choose the animation effect i have chosen sign you can see this animation in action whenever i mouse over these related posts you can see the animation in action so just play with the settings of this user related post and configure it by yourself the next thing is enabling breadcrumbs to enable easy navigation for the users go to seo and then click advanced in the side panel then tick enable breadcrumbs and select bold the lost page in the breadcrumb by default some themes may come with breadcrumbs and in such cases you don't need to do this but if your theme doesn't come with a breadcrumbs then you can enable this and click save changes the last recommendation is to install a plugin which makes every external links in your website to load in a new window for example when you have given an outbound link in your post that is a link to external websites and if a visitor click on that link then the external website will load in a new window so your website's post will be kept opened even if the user has moved to the external website in this way you can increase the time on site and reduce the bounce rate employ all these tips inside your website and try to get a bounce rate lower than 50 percentage which will improve your search engine ranking dramatically in this lecture you are going to learn how to set up google analytics to track the stats of your website in google search search for google analytics and click on the first search result then you will get this screen here click sign in to sign in with your gmail or google account once you have signed in you will be taken to this page if you are signing up in the google analytics for the first time then click sign up we are going to add our dummy website that is seo.inspireroom.com so first of all you need to give a name for the account this doesn't need to be the name of your website in each account you can create 50 properties in each property you can link a website or an application and if you are an udemy instructor you can even add your course to a property so let me give the name test account then give your website's name here if you want to give some other name other than the title of your website you can give that also for example udemy seo is the title of this dummy website i can opt for just seo or search engine optimization or test website etc website url here you need to paste the exact home page url of your website if you have added ssl certificate then choose https else leave http itself and then start typing your website from the www or just the nac domain name 
Here, I don't need to type www.seo.inspireroom.com. If I just type seo.inspireroom.com, that is enough. Now choose a industry category and then choose your time zone. Now scroll down to data sharing settings. Leave all the four recommended settings checked and then select get tracking ID. Google Analytics will display its terms of service agreement. Choose your country and then select I accept. You will be taken to this page. If you get any pop-up or alert window like this, click OK got it. And then you need to copy this script and paste it on your website. So in this lecture, we have successfully configured and we have got the website tracking code from Google Analytics. In this lecture, you will learn how to add Google Analytics code to your website. Before adding the code that we have got in the previous lecture, come to add new plugins page and search for Google Analytics. Then install Google Analytics dashboard for WP plugin by Alan Marku. To fast forward the process, I have installed this plugin. On the left side panel of your WordPress backend, select Google Analytics and then General Settings. Once you have entered into this page, click on the Authorize Plugin button. Now, click Get Access Code link. You will be asked to allow permission to link Google Analytics dashboard for WP plugin with your Google account. Click Allow and then select this code, copy it and then paste it here. Then click Save Access Code. By default, the plugin will display your property details. Double check whether everything is correct and triple check this tracking ID. See, both the tracking IDs are same. Now, click Save Changes. Now come to Tracking Code on the left side panel and make sure that the tracking options is enabled. If you are using affiliate links or if you want to track downloads and outbound links, then enable these events respectively. Under Exclude Tracking, if you want to exclude administrators, authors, or contributors from getting into analytics tracking, you can exclude them here. Then click Save Changes. Then come to Front End Settings. Here you can choose to show the stats to administrator, editor, author, and also contributor. Under Back End Settings, you can enable the reports on posts and pages list, and also you can enable the main dashboard widget. So let's see the dashboard widget. Go to WordPress dashboard and here comes the Google Analytics dashboard. After getting a few visitors to your website, this Google Analytics dashboard will get populated. If you go to all posts section, then you can access the analytics for individual post. When you click on this little icon, then the statistics for that page for the time span you mentioned here will be displayed. In this lecture, you learned how to add the Google Analytics code by installing a plugin called Google Analytics for WP. In this lecture, you will learn how to link your Google Analytics account with Google Search Console. Generally, when you sign in into Google Analytics, you will be taken to this home page. Then click on this admin on the menu bar and select the property that is SEO or the one which you have created. Then select property settings. Now scroll down before connecting the search console, enable the demographics and interest reports and also enable use enhanced link attribution. Now click on adjust search console. If your property is a verified website in Google Search Console, like this, and if you are the owner, obviously, if you have verified your site on Google Search Console, then you are an owner. In such case, 
you can associate your Google Search Console data in Google Analytics. Now click Edit. Select the website which you want to integrate with Google Analytics and then click Save. You are about to save a new association. Any existing Search Console association for this web property will be removed. So double check and then click OK. Now you have successfully configured Google Analytics with Search Console. Just refresh this page. Now you can see seo.inspireron.com under Search Console settings in this property settings in Google Analytics. Now click Save. If you haven't saved earlier after enabling the demographics and enhanced link attribution, Turn on both of them and click save now. When I hit save, it registered to save. And the reason is I haven't selected a default view. Select a default view and then hit save button. Now, this is the last step. On your WordPress site panel, come to SEO and then click on search console. Here, click get Google authorization code. Click Allow. Now copy this authorization code, paste it here and then click Authenticate. You will be displayed your URL, confirm it and then click Save Profile. This is done to enable these settings on Yoast SEO. It's almost like connecting Yoast SEO with Search Console because you will get all the important information or notifications from Search Console in Yoast SEO dashboard itself. For example, these five pages are not found, which could have been notified as an error in Search Console, but I could have missed notifying it. In such case, I can easily access these settings in Yoast SEO's Search Console dashboard. So simply, you can find all your 404 or 401 or other error codes in this dashboard. In this lecture, you have learned how to connect Google Analytics and Yoast SEO with Search Console.